Hi there, and welcome back to The Lisa Nichols Show, where we have grown folk conversations about how to live the life we love, how to navigate when life becomes challenging, and how to make sure that we are designing the life that reflects our birthright, abundance. I love reading your comments and seeing you engage and encourage each other. I love the fact that we have such a vibrant community around the conversations that we come together to have. I want to share a message that we can all use from time to time. You know, I pride myself in being someone who's willing to talk about the highs and discuss the lows, to talk about the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, the right, the wrong, and everything in between, to really have a 360 conversation. You know, the truth is that there are plans in life um, and we don't always agree with what's happening, that there are things that happen in our lives that just doesn't feel good. So today I'm sharing with you five things to do when things don't go the way that you expected. Now, I just have to tell you, uh, just in 2020, I moved here to the beautiful Bahamas and um, I you know, had this dream. I was moving to forward a relationship with my love. I finally found someone that I said, okay, I think, I think, this might be the one, <laughs> you know, when you have that feeling. And I moved to the Bahamas uh, to be with my then boyfriend, Marcellus. And the plan was he stays in his house. I stay in my house and we court and we date from the same city or the same location. Well, 42 days after I moved to the Bahamas, COVID hit. And all of a sudden, as you know, the world was on lockdown. And here in Nassau, it was a little different. You literally could not leave your home unless you were an essential worker. And I wasn't. And all of a sudden, I was away from my home state, away from my home country, in a foreign place. I couldn't drive. They drive on the opposite side of the road. I didn't have a car if I could. And COVID was here. And I had to really decide, am I going to go back? Because there were a few flights out. <laughs> and I can't lie. There were a couple of times where I entertained the thought, should I be on one in this crisis? And I remember what that felt like. I remember how scared I was. If I go back 20 plus years, I remember when I first launched Motivating the Masses, at the time, it was just motivating the teen spirit. And I remember thinking that so many parents were going to come to hear, to, to be inspired and to have their teens learn how to be emotionally healthy. And no one, no one knocked on my door. Better yet, knocked down my door like I thought. And all of a sudden, this container that I thought people were going to come to, I had to become a hunter. Now, I got to tell you, I hated sales, and honestly, I sucked at sales, probably because I hated sales. But I had to learn how to become really passionate and how to pivot and how to change directions and how to shift the program that I had for how the world was going to hear about motivating the teen spirit to a system that was actually going to work. I had to shift the way I was going to date and court um, my boyfriend, uh, and I had to pivot to make it work because COVID was here. So many times I've had to shift directions, slow down or speed up or ask for help. So I want to give you uh, some tips um, and I only give you what's worked for me. <laughs> if it didn't work for me, I'm not talking about it. Number one, you may want to write this down. Reevaluate. Take a step back and really examine the entire situation. And as much as you can examine it from an objective perspective, not a subjective perspective, meaning 
take all the emotion out of it and look at the facts. Stopping to look at your situation objectively helps you to identify what went wrong and why it happened. Now, I have to say, when I say objectively, that means pull as much emotion out of it as you can. Like when you do this, it can provide you with valuable insights and help you to be prepared in the future. So number one, reevaluate. Number two, pivot and adapt. This is one of those areas that really uh, people get stuck in because you're so sold out on the original plan. You're so sold out on the way you saw it. And really, I love you, but a lot of that after a while, if you're holding on to something and it's going down, 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 it will probably be more ego or lady she go that's having you hold on to it. When life doesn't go the way you plan, you may get sick or you may lose your job or a loved one transitions unexpectedly or a relationship ended before you thought it should end. You just had a bad day or whatever the situation is, the best way to move forward is to look at what's happening, to tell the truth about the truth. Don't lie to yourself and don't lie to anyone around you. Tell the truth about the truth and then adapt your plan to the truth. And sometimes the truth is not your desire. Your desire and the truth may not be the same. Adapt to what's happening. Adapt to the truth. Number three. Now this one was difficult for me at times. And that is give yourself grace. Say it with me. Give myself grace. Say it again. Everybody in the studio. One, two, three. Give myself grace. Oh my God. That one right there you're allowed to feel your feelings. Leaders, if you're a leader like me, you're a gladiator, you're a change maker, you really have to focus on giving yourself grace. You really have to focus on allowing yourself to feel your feelings. So often we get analytical, we analyze, and we say the feeling doesn't make sense to have, so we negate it. Let me tell you something about feelings. Feelings are neither right nor wrong. They're just real. You might feel disappointed or frustrated, but remember to give yourself grace. You might feel embarrassed and ashamed, but remember, give yourself grace. I felt all of that, by the way. I don't think there's a feeling out there that is deep and dark and hard to climb over that I have not felt because the bigger you play, the bigger your breakdowns. And oh, by the way, if you're not having breakdowns, it's probably because you're not playing big enough. So how you respond or react is totally normal, but don't get stuck in the emotion. I love to say it this way. Feel your emotion, but don't take out real estate in it. Don't be so committed to being angry or afraid that you become immobilized by it. Don't have paralysis of the analysis. Don't get frozen in the emotion. Number four. Now this one was one that took me a while to really begin to do. And now I do it so well. So you can always teach yourself. There is hope no matter how wise or old you might be. Four, call on your tribe. You don't have to walk this journey alone. We are so much stronger together. And when you evict the stinking thinking that says, if I need help, that must equal I'm weak. Oh, man. And the older and wiser you get, the more you realize how that's not the truth, right? The wisest people I know, and I know some pretty amazing people, the wisest people I know always call on their tribe. Don't hesitate to reach out to your community to help you. Lean on them the way you want them and you invite them to lean on you if needed. Now, you might say, Lisa, what if you don't have a community? What if I don't have a community? My family doesn't support me. One of the things I learned, and it took a while for me to get this, is you can find and create your community. 
If you're here with me, that means something about me and this community vibes with you. So lean in more and more and more. One of the major ways is come to one of my events, whether it's virtual or live, because the best people on the planet who are always committed to moving forward come to my events. And I'm very intentional about creating community within the community. So call on your tribe. And number five, keep moving forward. And, 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 and I, I say that because when you keep moving forward, nothing can stay the same. Hallelujah. When you keep moving forward, don't get so stuck in the quicksand caught this moment. Don't make this moment a forever moment. Don't cut and paste this chapter into the next chapter and then cut and paste that chapter into the next chapter. Keep moving forward because after a while, whatever you're going through, has to be in your rear view mirror. Don't let your setbacks keep you from creating a life that you deserve and a life that's no doubtably for you. Learn from the experience, chalk it up, put it in your arsenal so that in the future, if something similar should happen, you can go, oh, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've been here before. And when I was here before, you can either pull from what you did wrong or what you did right. Everything is fuel. Remember, failure is often a stepping stone to greatness. I have some of my greatest experience today and my life is far from perfect. But I have some of my greatest experiences today because of a former failure that I tweaked and I modified and I pivoted from and now I have a whole nother experience. It's normal that things don't always go as planned. Matter of fact, we need that. We need those experiences. You need things to not always go as planned. That way you build your resiliency muscle. You build your tenacity muscle. You build your determination muscle. You build your forgiveness muscle. You build your patience muscle. You build your faith muscle. It amazes me how we really wanna build these muscles without going through anything that requires the muscles to be developed. You cannot Google download patience. You can't Google download resiliency. You have to go through something to get it. So what's important is how you move forward and how you bring the lesson. You may have a failure. We all have failures. I think one of the biggest difference between me and a lot of people who are looking at my life is that I failed more than them. Well, what that means is I got up and I ran again more than them in order to fail more than them. And then I learned a lot of lessons from my failures. So I hope that I just stopped by to just remind you that even if you're sitting inside of a plan that's gone wrong, remember that it's the perfect time for you to find out what you're made of, find out who you're becoming and find out what your convictions are. This show, I want you to remember, this show is not a monologue. This show is a dialogue. This is our community, yours and mine. So I would love to hear from you. What was a big aha for you by just listening to this show? What did you get out of this episode? What pivot do you have to make right now? And which one of these five points did you need to hear to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know you know something until you're going through something and then you forget the thing you already knew and then you need a sister friend to give you a reminder. Comment below, leave a comment below and let me know what was of value for you in this episode and then comment with each other. We are a community, right? After all, this is your home. And right here, we are your tribe. And I, I am always going to be your sister in prosperity and in possibility. And every single time you hear me say that I believe in you and that I love you, it's because I do. I really, really do. I'll see you real soon.